Hi, I'm S. Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics and I am back with the promised first impressions of the FPS 1000 HD high-speed camera. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, what I have learned uh, using this and producing a few uh, videos uh, already. And show you some of the footage that I have not uh, made public yet because it's not really uh, relevant to electronics hobby but can be used in the review uh, for the camera. So let's take a look at it. Here is my setup so far. Uh, it consists of the uh, FPS 1000 HD camera which is now turned on. You could, can probably hear the fan. Uh, I bought the uh, Samsung batteries that Graham uh, recommends, which is the INR1850. Uh, um, these perform pretty well, but uh, only last about an hour uh, in the camera while operating or saving data to the SD card, which was pre-announced that it was a power-hungry camera. Um, I bought the uh, batteries along with this uh, USB uh, charger which is kind of a... Uh, nah, I'm not too satisfied with it because it only charges with half an amp per battery so it takes a very long time to charge up these 25 milliampere amp uh, batteries. So while you can quickly drain these they're not getting charged up that easy again. And as I have only used the SD card um, as a means of taking data out of the camera so far, uh, that was actually what drained mo most of my uh, battery. Until I got a uh, adapter, but uh, this little 30 watt um, adapter, it's not completely 30 watts. That's some um, Chinese export mumble jumble because the camera will just freeze, not start up, stop recording, so on, because the power supply is not good enough. Because as soon as I switch back to batteries, no problems. Now you have probably been wondering about the uh, pretty huge lens that sits over here. Now this is from a old uh, TV zoom uh, surveillance camera. It's a um, Ernitec TV zoom lens, 1.8 focal, 16 to 160 millimeters, and uh, it comes uh, with uh, these uh, rather loose um, adjustments. But this is because these are actually meant for uh, motorized control from a remote. But I uh, made a clamp from a uh, standard um, 50 millimeter girder uh, girder supply for discotheques and uh, scenery uh, or scene construction. Made a small adapter uh, with a piece of plate, so I can uh, just mount it with on the tripod like uh, any camera. Because this lens is uh, incredibly heavy, so the FPS 1000 will have to sit mounted on the lens itself, and that works perfectly fine. So to demonstrate the interface, um, I just recorded a little bit of my uh, computer screen. So uh, you can see that if I wanted to record something, I would just press the record button, and it would go into armed mode when the red numbers are shown up here. When I press uh, record once again, it starts recording until I press stop. Now that is pretty simple and I did not need to read the manual to actually do that or to find out that I have to press play, use the, the cut start, the cut end and then press the diskette uh, icon to save the images to the SD card. That all made pretty good sense and there is a uh, seeker bar down here at the bottom and also here there is not much magic in that you could push the uh, image and disturb it, but you can also scroll down here. But what I did uh, find a little weird was that this was incredibly hard to find the, um, the part that you wanted, because it's usually in a few couple of uh, frames that you have your uh, epicenter. So when you quickly scroll uh, maybe 2000 frames down here, it's hard to find the, the right time. 
because it takes a long time to save all this data and much of the data that you record will never get used. So then I did actually read the manual. Of course I never do that first. And then I found out that you can just slide on the screen to easily select the frame that you want to see and you can also start playing or go backwards. So that is practically uh, how this camera works and uh, the whole interface that is to it. Um, if I want to uh, delete what I have recorded, which is necessary because a camera like this works by simply dumping the raw image sensor data down into the buffer. So if I start to record at the same memory space once again, I will just overwrite the existing data with new data, but it will get mixed up in a, some weird, weird uh, bastard mix that when you think you have made a really nice recording, you try to replay it and it's just brown and bronze, yellow, weird figures and you just think oh my damn I forgot to reset the memory again and to reset the memory you simply just arm the camera hold down the power button press the record button and it overrides the whole frame buffer with white pictures so that is the uh, how you operate the camera okay there's one more thing if you want to change the resolution you press the resolution it starts blinking and then you just press uh, somewhere on the display and you can see that it changes so it's 640 uh, pixels over here and 1280 pixels here and nothing happens over here okay here it also changes the 1280 but this is all invisible there's no pointers as to where you said what you just have to look at the numbers when you click and then when you press uh, turns yellow, readjust the camera and this is also why you can't really record uh, at different resolutions or you can record at different resolutions but you would have to remember the exact number of frames when you're going to save them out because you will have to set up the camera once again to the correct resolution that you recorded in because this is just a pointer down in the buffer it's not like it saves images in that uh, particular size. This uh, resolution is used when you're saving out the, uh, the files, but also when you record it. So this is allocation of the memory when you record, but it's also allocation uh, of where to read the memory when you save the images. So this has to be exactly the same for what you record and what you save, because if I say I record something in 640 or we can actually see it now we can see it's just something that flips around I change the resolution now we try to replay and we can see that the image is now eight times on the screen and this is basically what happens when you adjust the uh, resolution you simply change where in the uh, frame buffer the camera looks for the uh, complete image information according to the selected resolution. The camera comes with a piece of software on the SD card which is this PC control uh, program and it does exactly what the camera can do itself. You have play, record, stop, cut, uh, start, cut, end, um, save the images and uh, erase memory except that save the images here should be able to save them by the USB 3 cable and not to the SD card which is rather slow. So if we just try to uh, record something here, like if I put my fingers in front of here, like that, and we uh, try to replay that, Let's see here, there it is. Here my fingers come moving into the picture. Okay, it's a little dark, but I, I actually have two uh, LED uh, flashlights um, lighting this uh, piece of my desktop up. 
But if I wanted to uh, save this now, if say uh, we want it from here, cut start to here, cut end and save that. Oh, it actually pops up here. Nice. Okay, that saves really fast. This is uh, a huge improvement over the um, SD card save that is like maybe one frame per second or even slower uh, at times. So I can see uh, that you really need to have a laptop with you if you take this camera out in the field because saving to the SD card is only for absolute um, uh, emergency uh, cases where you have no other choice because you simply drain the battery, it takes way too long, you cannot have a real uh, workflow when you have recorded something and you have to edit it really before saving it and so on so but uh, this uh, software uh, is yeah it's simple it's basic and but it does what it does okay seems to just keep saving the uh, the whole buffer let's see what we have uh, out here yep it just kept saving and saving and saving and saving and it's actually saving both uh, JPEG and the raw file. That's uh, rather interesting. So uh, the uh, program uh, actually does some uh, um, development of the raw data. That could uh, save a few steps, but naturally uh, you would like to process your raw pictures in something like uh, Lightroom to adjust lightning and uh, remove noise and so on which uh, we can take a look at now so once all the raw pictures are imported into Lightroom we can see that the first picture here is uh, rather dark but one thing that I do like about Lightroom is how that the, the previews are not processed uh, ahead uh, it's first made when you actually view a picture and that gives a unique opportunity to see the raw data uh, really fast. If I just press uh, arrow, right arrow to scroll to the next picture and hold it down, uh, it looks like this. And here we can easily see the uh, raw data because if I stop it, we can see that the scene is incredible dark. But this way, where I do not let it render the uh, preview picture, I can actually use this as a very fine method of finding out exactly what is going on in the scene in the raw data. So if I want to use something from here and then say that we want to use this range of pictures, there is the feature called auto sync um, in Lightroom so I can uh, actually change uh, all the properties and set up lightning and remove noise and so on for the uh, 251 selected images that I just took. So if we go into a developer, I can do the same for removing um, noise. Or I can play around with the highlights, shadow, whites, and so on. The exposure, if we thought, okay, now need a little more light. And there, it's done for all the pictures. I would like to end this uh, video about the first impressions with the first video that I recorded with the camera which was me blowing out a candle or at least me failing to blow out a candle. Uh, this is filmed at uh, 720p at 1000 frames per second and it turned out uh, pretty well. Um, I just took the camera out of the box, put in the batteries and recorded this and yeah, that's how easy the camera is to use. Um, a couple of days later uh, I recorded uh, another video which is um, six LED strips that I wanted to use for uh, lightning for high-speed photography. Uh, but these are only uh, around 40 watt uh, in total and there's only three things that you need for uh, high-speed filming and that is light, light and more light. So I need somewhere around one kilowatt of uh, LED to um, have any serious uh, scene lightning. 
but what we can actually see here the uh, light dimming up and down this is uh, recorded at 640 times uh, 180 pixels at 8000 frames per second uh, and it's actually the 100 hertz uh, ripple in the power supply that we can see here which I calculated uh, according to the uh, frame rate and when the uh, light was uh, dimming um, so that turned out to be that because I was uh, thirst thinking that it could be the switching, switching frequency of the inverter but no it's not that the last video I would like to show is how we made the adapter for the uh, large zoom lens. This is recorded at 640 uh, times uh, 480 pixels at 4000 frames per second. It's a, a piece of 20 millimeter aluminum in the uh, lathe, um, getting roughed on the uh, outside. And here we can see the uh, yeah, it's just a short, short clip uh, looping right now. But we can see a single strand of aluminum uh, shopping that whirls around in the air. So, uh, overall conclusion so far is that the camera is uh, unforgiving to work with, that it is a, a semi-professional piece as it deals with the uh, raw data in a buffer and that nothing is given to you, that you have to know how to work with raw data in order to uh, make it into something useful but overall I'm really looking forward to use this for some uh, capacitor bank explosions I have a few good ideas and a wide range of uh, tests of some uh, miniature circuit breakers so uh, stay tuned <laughs>